This is a book review. Some uh, interesting ideas and takeaways I found in this book. This, this is Your Brain on Music by Daniel J. Levitine. In general, I'll start with a quick review. I'll give this book three stars. I might even give it a four. And I kind of uh, acknowledge the idea that I'm a little biased because I'm not as knowledgeable about music theory. So many things I didn't quite understood. And from my stand of view, I think you could do a better job explaining some of those parts. So it was a lot of jargon. Um, so if you don't know a lot about music, uh, it will be a little hard for you. So that's why I think it should get a three. Um, but I do think I'm gonna get back to this book eventually. Uh, maybe will I learn a little more, will be a little more, a little more knowledgeable about uh, music theory. Uh, but I definitely learned some things. Um, that's why I'm saying it's like a three, it may even be a low three, because it kind of diverts. It's not only talking about music. He's talking about many other things that are not directly related. I thought it would be more about music and this is your brain and music. It's more, uh, he's talking a lot about the brain, which again, I didn't saw that, that direct connection. Let's see the notes. Timber is the different sound, different instruments make even though they play the same note. So different, that's, uh, that's timber. That's different sounds from different instruments. We can still play the same note. People like to listen to live music because it's overstimulated the auditory system. Well, that's why we like it. It's overstimulation in some way. And that's why we like to listen to live music. Just like when we group a visual stimuli, we tend to group sounds. If two instruments play together, we tend to bind them together to one sound. So just like when we group visual stimuli, we do the same in visuals, we tend to group sounds. So we don't hear every sound by itself. We hear like a coherent sound. We don't listen like we listen to an orchestra. We don't listen to every each instrument. We, we hear a coherent sound. What, the element of surprise is what makes some songs so good. So it's all about the element of surprise. We, we constantly predict where the next uh, note will be and when it will get violated, uh, this is, makes, it, makes a song uh, good. That's what we like. That's when we think a song is good. The two theories and memories. One claim memories are relational without too many details. Too many. The other theory claims that memory is like a camera. So there is two theories about memory. And one of them is relational. So there is like no, 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 uh, not too many details. It's just like a relationship between one to, an, one to another. And that one is literally like a camera. You just get every, every detail. A new and more contemporary theory of memory claims that there is, a, there is families of things that are associated with one another and are relating to one another in a certain amount of degree, which can be debated. So there is like a family of, of things that are connected or associated with one another. And the relationship between them can be debated, but this is more like, uh, I guess it's more of like in between those two theories that we see over here. So there is like the connection between them and the amount of degree, it really it depends on, I'm not sure, I remember what, on what it, it depended on, but it depended on and can be debated uh, what, how, how well are they connected. The more cues a memory has, the less likely is some things to trigger it. Same as when we, when there is many details associated with a memory it will be harder to retrieve. So there is more, the more cues our memory has, the harder it to retrieve it. You can say because, this is not what he says in the book, but because there is so many, you, you, can, you can't summon this up all the time. So you're just not getting it all together. So instead of like, in theory, let's say instead of you have like a hundred times this memory got 
triggered. You're not going to remember that a hundred times because that's too much. So your brain in some way are just not letting you do that. But again, the more cues it has, the less likely uh, you will to remember that from association. And then it also will be harder to retrieve then. We like music because the part of our brain which usually used to track pattern is being violated when we listen to music. So if we think that there is a pattern, it'll go one, two, three, four, and it doesn't go one, two, three, four, and then uh, it's being violated and that's why we like it. When checking identical twins, it's harder to know whether their phys physical trait impacts their personality more than nature. Things such as tallness affect the people and their surroundings. So we have identical twins. So we, we're not, it's hard to know which one are more impacting their personality. Is it nurture? It's kind of like a nature nurture thing. But what, what's happening is uh, so things such as tallness affect the people and their surroundings. Because how tall they are is affecting their surroundings and the way people are treating them. So it's like, is it nurture or nature? Uh, it's hard to know. Because in some way, their nature impacting their nurture. So that's why it's so problematic. Nature, nurture kind of an idea. One claim against 10,000 hours mastery is that Mozart composed music in the age of four. The rebuttal is that his good music was only after that 10K. So there is like the 10K you need to like, in order to master uh, anything, most things, but usually people will, will uh, oppose and claim that Mozart composed music even when he was four. So he did not have 10,000 hours. But the rebuttal is that his good music, yes, he composed music in the age of four, but his good music was only after that 10K. 10,000 hours in the equivalent of three hours a day for 10 years. That's what 10 hours is. Three hours a day for 10 years, that's a long time. We tend to remember memories with intense emotion. This is one of the reasons we tend to remember songs from early ages when things were more intense in general. So when we were young, when we were young, everything is more intense and therefore we tend to remember those memories better because we tend to remember memories with intense emotions better than other memories. That's why also we remember those songs from early ages because we were, uh, we had intense emotions. Music can serve an evolutionary trait similar to a peacock tail, where it shows is I have enough resources that I can spend on the luxury activities. So that's what music can serve an evolutionary trait. So just like the peacock tail, it shows like I'm so strong or so good that I can allow to have that extra weight or extra things to carry on. Same thing with music. I have enough resources to spend on luxury item. I don't need it, but I'm, I, have a, I'm, I'm, I have enough. I'm better than the rest because I have enough resources that I can spend this even on the bullshit things. Music could also help to maintain group cohesion or help people to stay awake at night to fend predators. So that's kind of another uh, benefit of music is that it could help group cohesion because you know, everyone are sitting together and there is like that group cohesion and also could help people to stay awake at night because if you play something, it's, it's easier for you to, play, to stay awake and therefore fend predators. It's also kind of evolutionary uh, helpful and beneficial so that's it for notes again probably a three star and again could be because i'm a little biased I'm not, i didn't understand some of the parts but again i think it could be you could do a much better job explaining those parts or just leaving them out uh, for a more uh, wider audience that's it thank you